Welcome to the ENIT Employer How-To Video Series. This lesson will discuss how to work with payroll deductions and benefits in ENIT Employer. The lesson will focus primarily on non-statutory deductions that are set up by your company. There are many examples of these types, such as dental plan premiums, life insurance premiums, pension contributions, union dues, garnishy orders, and so on. Statutory deduction amounts, such as income tax, CPP, EI premiums, and so on, are automatically calculated by the program and do not require any added setup. During the lesson, we will also create a calculation function that we will associate with our new deduction, and we will also work with the employee benefit that is related to our new deduction. In many situations, both deductions and benefits are related. Therefore, when you create a deduction item in ENET Employer, a corresponding benefit item is also created, and vice versa. You then have the option of utilizing the deduction only, the benefit only, or both. So let's begin by logging into the program and choosing the payroll service. Once the program appears, ensure that you are on the payroll tab and then choose the current payroll deductions command. This opens the deductions page that allows us to enter our company's non-statutory deductions. These are the amounts that are subtracted from the employee's pay by the company. Typical company deductions include such items as union dues, parking fees, savings bonds, and so on. Other common deductions are associated with benefit programs, such as health plans, life insurance plans, etc. Since these latter deductions are commonly paid by the employer on the employee's behalf, they are set up on the benefits page as opposed to here on the deductions page. We will discuss benefits later in the lesson. Notice that we already have two deductions set up for our sample payroll, one for group insurance contributions and one for a percentage garnish order that can be applied to employees if needed. The group insurance deduction is set up to be calculated based on a function, as noted in the Calculate Deduction cell. The actual function that will be used is shown in the Calculation function right beside it. In this case, the function is entitled Group Insurance. This particular function will arrive at the deduction amount by calculating 2% of the sum of each employee's regular or salary earnings for the year. We will review this function a bit later in the lesson. The percentage garnish function is set up to garnish a flat percentage of the employee's wage each period. Deductions can also be defined as fixed amounts. These can be the same for all employees and can be useful for weekly lotto deductions, birthday party funds, and so on. If we double click on a row, we will enter edit mode. This will allow us to edit the various cells or to review the various options in more detail. Currently, the group insurance amount is set to be excluded from the T4. If we click on the drop-down list, we can see that this amount can be applied to a specific T4 box as needed. Similarly, if we click on the Calculation Deduction cell, we can see the various methods that can be used to calculate this deduction, from individual amounts per specific employee, to static fixed amounts, and lastly, the current function-based method we're using now. The row also contains a carry-forward year-end balance option. This is useful in specifying whether the deduction's year-end balance should be carried forward to the subsequent year, as opposed to zeroing out the balance at year-end. Carry-forwards would be useful for garnish-type deductions, where the amount needs to be taken off each pay period until a cap is reached, even if the garnish crosses over several years. Once we are finished reviewing the details for the row, we can exit edit mode by choosing either the toggle edit button from the button bar above the table, or by right clicking on the row and choosing the edit toggle edit command. Now that we've reviewed our deductions, let's create one from scratch. For our lesson, we will create an RRSP deduction that will accrue 4% of each employee's earnings. To begin defining the settings for a new deduction, select the New button. 
This action inserts a new deduction row into the table and it appears in edit mode so that we can begin editing the various cells. Move to the name cell and enter RRSP deduction. Then move to the short name cell and enter RRSP. The program will use the RRSP abbreviation anytime space restrictions are needed, such as when printing the employee pay stub. The As Deduction cell contains a check in its box and can be left as is. This instructs the program to calculate the deduction in the current payroll. There are also situations where you may wish to remove the check from this box, such as when the program has created a matching deduction item, but you do not wish it to be used in any calculations. As mentioned earlier in the lesson, matching deductions are created automatically when you create a benefit item. The RRSP deduction will not be included on the employee's T4, so we can leave the T4 box cell with the default setting of Exclude from T4. Similarly, RRSPs do not have an associated registration number, so we can leave this cell blank. Moving forward, we come to the Before Tax cell. We will place a check in this box to indicate that the deduction will be made before tax. This means that the RSP contribution amount will be deducted before the employee's tax is calculated. The class cell can be left with the default standard setting. This cell is used to specify how the deduction should be classified in terms of its taxable status and is for administrative purposes only. By the way, if you come across an item or term in the program for which you need a detailed explanation, you can open the online help by pressing the F1 key on your keyboard or by choosing the help icon, the question mark at the top of each table. The online help system describes each column and page in detail and all descriptions are provided in alphabetical order to make it easier to locate the item for which you are looking. The next column is entitled Calculate Deduction. As with the group insurance deduction we discussed earlier, the RSP deduction will need to be calculated based on a function. Therefore, we will click on the drop-down list and choose the By Function option. This will specify the deduction's calculation method. With the method chosen, we come to the final cell that we will need to edit in this row, Calculate Function. If we click on the drop-down list, we will see a list of existing functions that were previously created for use in the payroll. However, since we have not yet created an RRSP function that will be associated with our new RRSP deduction, we will leave this cell with a default setting for just a moment. This will allow us to move to the Functions page to create the associated function, and then we will return to this page and select our new function from this cell. With the settings completed for the row, we will now choose the Save icon. That's the orange check mark located at the left side of the row. Now let's move on to the Functions page to create the associated function that we need. Choose the current payroll, Functions command. Functions are the mathematical formulas and methods that can be used to automate the calculation of various items in your payroll such as deductions, benefits, accumulators, and so on. Functions can be used for simple calculations, like a garnishment where a flat percentage of the employee's wage is deducted each pay period, or complex calculations where multiple items are involved, such as a deduction for a pension where the deduction is the sum of specified earnings that is multiplied by a set percentage. So let's add a function for our RSP deduction by selecting the New button and inserting a blank function row into the table. We can now begin defining our expression and related variables for the calculation. Note, we just inserted a blank function, but the drop-down list also contains a variety of preset functions that you can add in order to speed up the process. If you choose one of these other options when adding your function to the table, the expression will be set and you can begin defining the variables as needed.
Getting back to our lesson and our new blank function, we must now create an expression where 4% of each employee's earnings will automatically accrue towards an RSP. In our demo payroll, employees are paid either hourly or by salary. As such, there will be four earning types to assign to this expression, regular, salary, commission, and staff pay. Therefore, we need to calculate the RRSP amount to accrue on each of these combined earning types. Our formula will need to add up each of the employee's earnings and then multiply the result by 4% to arrive at the deduction amount. Enter RRSP deduction into the function cell and then select the add variable button three times. We now have three variable sub rows along with our initial top row. Each of these four rows must now be edited to support the four arguments shown in the expression cell. We will complete the expression in a moment. Since the function will be based on calculated dollar amounts, the default shown in the type cell for all four variables can be left with the default dollar setting. Similarly, each of the four value cells show a default amount of 10. This amount can also be left with the default for all four variables, since these cells will only be used for validating the function and will not be used for any payroll calculations. Refer to the values description in the online help for more information on this cell. Move to the item cell for the first row and then select the earning regular option. The symbol cell can be left with the default value of x1 as it represents the first argument in the expression. For the next row, that is the first sub-row, select the statutory pay option. As with the previous row, the symbol value can be left with x4 to represent the second argument in the expression. For the next row, select the salary earning type and leave the symbol value at x3. And for the final sub-row, select the commission type and leave the symbol value as x2. Lastly, we'll move to the expression cell and modify the expression to read open bracket and then the four variable symbols, close bracket, times 0.04. This function will take the sum of the four variables for each employee and then multiply the result by 4%. With the variables in place and the expression defined, choose the test button to validate the function. The test result column should now display 160. The 160 represents 4% of the combined amount shown in the value cell for all four variables. Since the four symbols have an associated entry in their respective item column, the live payroll calculation will use the actual calculated values that correspond to these four symbols. Regular earnings, salary, and so on. In this case, the number 10 shown in the values column are for testing purposes only to help us validate our expression in this page. With the function now validated, we can save the information for all of the edited rows by choosing the Save icon at the left of the main row. Now that our RRSP deduction function is in place, we must return to the deductions page and apply it to the RRSP deduction that we created earlier. To do so, move to the current payroll menu and choose the deductions command once again. When the deductions page appears, double click on the RRSP deduction row and then select the drop down list in the calculate functions column. You will now see a function entitled RSP deduction. This corresponds to the function that we just created. Choose the newly created function from the list and then save the row. As mentioned earlier in the lesson, when you create a deduction item and need an employer, a corresponding benefit item is also created. This provides the option of utilizing the deduction portion only, 
the benefit portion only, or both. In our demo payroll, we will also be utilizing the benefit portion since the employer will be matching each employee's contribution amount. To edit the required benefit settings, move to the current payroll menu and choose the benefits option. When the page appears, notice that three benefit items exist. These correspond to the three items that we saw earlier on the deductions page. Now we can modify the RSP deduction benefit to designate the employer's portion. Double click on the RSP deduction row, then place a check in the As Benefit box. This signifies that the program should include the benefit portion in the payroll calculations. Next, we will click on the drop down list in the T4 box benefit cell and we'll choose the T440 Other Taxables option. This specifies that the benefit amount should be assigned to this box on each employee's T4. Next, we will click on the drop down list in the Subject 2 cell and place a check in any box to which the benefit may be subject, be it tax category or other. In our case, we'll choose all of the options except Quebec tax. Next, we'll move to the Calculate Benefit cell and choose the Buy Function option. This specifies that the benefit amount should be based on a calculated function. With the calculation method now defined, we can complete the row by applying the appropriate function. We do so by clicking on the Calculate Function cell and then choosing the RSP deduction function that we created earlier. With the settings completed for the row, choose the Save icon to store the changes. This completes the procedure for defining a deduction and its associated benefit in the net employer. Although this particular deduction used the straightforward function that multiplied the sum of an employee's earnings by a set percentage, keep in mind that you can create complex deductions by using the functions page to define intricate formulas through the use of if statements and other operators, such as min n, max n, sum, square root, and so on. For detailed descriptions of this feature, you can open the online help system by pressing F1 on your keyboard and then browsing to the functions page. We hope you found the lesson useful, and as always, if you need a detailed explanation for any program item or function, press F1 to access the online help system at any time. Thanks for watching, and please remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more how-to videos.